Hey there, welcome to the Kim Constable podcast. Nobody cares, work harder. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do I have a very special episode for you this week. So I have my own trainer, Mark Getty, as a guest on the podcast this week. And we had this all set up just to record a podcast as we normally do. And I messaged him a few minutes ago when I was like, Mark, let's go live in the five day challenge group and let's record this podcast live where people can watch and they can see the video and they can also ask questions. So Mark was like, okay, sure, whatever you think, no problem at all, I'm up for anything. So we recorded this podcast live inside the five day challenge group. Um, the five day challenge is something we've just run recently called the five day shredded body challenge. And we had 24,000 people join the challenge. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I just thought that it would be really good for them to hear Mark and hear everything he has to say, because OMG, he has so much wisdom it is not even funny. 22 years in bodybuilding. He is literally the biggest, most muscliest dude I've ever met in my entire life. And there's really nothing he does not know about shredding fat and building muscle. I think you're going to absolutely love this Q&A. And before we get to it, I just want to remind you that if you want to win a sculpted vegan program, including the 18 month sculpt and shred program, then all you have to do is leave a review wherever you listen to this podcast and let me know what you loved about it. And then send me a screenshot on Instagram at the sculpted vegan and you can be in with a chance of winning one of our sculpted vegan programs. It is now the end of September and we're going to be doing the draw. It's actually not even a draw, by the way. It, we choose the best review. So whatever someone has said, the funniest, wittiest, most heartfelt review, it's not just, you know, you don't want to send me a screenshot saying, yay, great, loved it. You know, that isn't going to go into the podcast draw. We really want you to kind of put a bit of effort into it. And then we choose the best one from, um, from what has been written rather than just putting the names in a hat, if that makes sense. So if you want to win a Sculpted Vegan program, make sure you leave that review. Send me a screen grab of the review and you could be in with the chance of winning a Sculpted Vegan program. So I'm not going to chat to you again at the end. I'm just going to go straight into the podcast interview now. And then I will catch you next week for another episode of the Kim Constable podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to take you now over to the interview with Mark Getty. Enjoy. Mark Getty, how are you? Good. How's you? I haven't seen you in a few days. Yeah, yeah. How's the legs? Oh, it's a wee bit tight. No, not too bad, Mark. Not too bad. But Ryan thinks that you're not working me hard enough. Ryan was like, ah, but yes, he goes. And I said to him, I said, oh, there's a wee bit tight, but not too bad. And he says, but were you, are you lying on the floor, Kim? He said, like, are you lying on the floor, like writhing in pain, feeling like you're going to vomit? The, like, I'm taking like, notes for next year. Tuesday. Next Tuesday, I know. we'll see. I said, well, I haven't been lying on the floor, writhing in pain and in a few weeks, I have to be honest, I said, but that's because Mark knows I'm just cruising at the minute. There's no need to absolutely slaughter me. So we'll see about that. I uh, yeah, see about <laughs> that. Yeah. But I, you know what, Mark, actually, that's one of the things that I want to cover tonight um, as well, because I mean, just while we're waiting for people to get on, there's 28 on now. We've absolutely shocked the hell out of people, I think, here uh, by uh, doing this surprise live. But I, I think one of the things I do want to talk about tonight as well, I guess, is um, you know, it is muscle is maintenance and about, you know, building muscle and maintaining over the long term, because um, are, were you surprised? Because I, I, now, I'm, now I'm like, I would, now I want you to blow my trumpet, Mark. No, I don't really. But I, I had obviously built my own gym at home and I've been training at home a lot. And then you were away on holiday and we were away on holiday. And I hadn't, I don't think I had seen you for maybe two or three months, maybe. It must have been, yeah, it was. Legs. But did you expect me to come back a wee bit weaker? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> See, to be honest with you, nothing really surprises me with you at this stage. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> And I was seeing that you were training, but I did think you would definitely come back with a wee bit. But I knew you would have a lot to prove as well. So it was in a 50 50 of that one, but I definitely thought you'd come back slightly weaker. Oh. You know? So well surprised, you know, well surprised yeah. in a good yeah. way. In a good yeah, way. No, it's been good. It's been good. I've really, really enjoyed being back to training with you. But Mark, uh, for those of you who don't, uh, for those of the, those people in the group who don't know you, because this is a new group that we have 24,000 people. Like I said, you were like, no pressure, Kim. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, although this podcast has about 250,000 downloads a month as well. So you're definitely No reaching. pressure twice. Yeah, no pressure twice. But um, for those of you who don't know you, Mark, uh, you and I have been, you have been my trainer for the last um, three years now, I yeah. think. Yeah, three years. Yeah, yeah would be. And you are um, literally known as the muscle maker in the Sculpted Vegan groups. For, for those of you. I like that. Yeah, for those ones who don't know you here, um, let me just tell them a little bit about my experience of you, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to you. So, Mark, yeah, no Eddie, Mark Eddie, for those of you who don't know him, is uh, the one who I always tell the stories about. The story about that I was away with a friend of mine, and she 
kind of dropped her pants one day. Her well, not actually her pants. <laughs> thing, her pants <laughs> <called> trousers. <laughs> she dropped her pants and showed me her quads, and I was like, "I want quads like that. How do I get quads like that?" And she was like, two words, Mark Getty." I was like, "Take me to your leader. <laughs> Show me where this man is. I need to Let's meet him." Go. And I think I got back from the show on the Monday morning and I was in your gym on the Tuesday and yeah. having a conversation with you. And I was just like, you were like, well, what do you want? I was like, Mark, I want big legs. I want more muscle. And you were like, well, let's go. And you said, show me what you've been doing. And I showed you my training program yeah. and you were like, okay. And I was in the gym like two hours a day, two hours a day, six I days a week. And you looked at it and you were like, well, let me tell you, you will, you'll be doing half that when you come to train with me. And true to form within nine months my quads doubled in size in fact my whole body doubled in size with the amount of muscle so half the training and double, double the size the mark getty how the hell do you do that to people how do you get those kind of results um because i've been doing it that long i've been training now over 20 years and like i say i've studied bodybuilding inside and out and uh like probably the guy that i was sort of aspired to be like which was doing it's at the time I sort of fell in love with his training principles, which was basically efficiency and intensity over volume and basically length of time, you know. So I kind of took that to the gym and realized after a short period of time that you didn't have to be in the gym any longer than an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, if you'd done everything right. Now, the difference is when you say to people, uh, like I said to you the first time, Kim, I'm going to half your workout and I'm going to make I'm it hard. You kind of thought... 10 exercises you were doing, I think, up to that point. 10 yeah. exercises, maybe 10 or 12 per steps per exercise, you know, per session. And I said, we'll do four or five and tell me how you feel. Do you know what I mean? And I think that epitome, I've said that to people. And when they try legs, well, their first experience, what was your first experience of it after the fact, after the aftermath? <laughs> well, listen, I have to be honest, right? So in the gym, whenever we were training legs, I, yeah. I walked out, had felt like my whole body had been wrung out. Like I didn't feel like I could do anymore, but I also walked out not feeling like like annihilated i can't yeah. like and you and you explained it to me afterwards and you said because you know your body was physically done but your central nervous system was still intact yeah. you know yeah. and uh, and that so yes yeah, so i felt completely annihilated but interestingly i didn't feel beaten up if that yeah. makes sense i don't know if yeah. you can if you, you get you understand the distinction i'm making but it you was i didn't muscle, walk for system. 11 days 11 yeah. days i couldn't walk for 11 days without pain 11 days I counted. And, and, and that is exactly how people feel. I've had people coming through the doors on a weekly, daily basis, and they all basically do legs. And if they get the exercise two or three intact, that's about it. They're running out of the gym or they're going to the toilet or they're being sick or they haven't even got to the toilet. My green mile has seen more bulk than I don't know what in the past five years since that gym's been open. And I think it's a baptism of fire. It shows people that in reality, they're not pushing themselves where they need to go. And uh, I've been chatting to you about this. I've been talking to Christina about this a lot. And people only think they're training hard until they actually train hard for the first time. And I think that's sort of the wake up call that they actually realize. And if they be true to themselves and take responsibility for it, they actually realize that they can push themselves a hell of a lot harder. And that's what I found in my early years. I thought I was training hard until I started training with fellas that actually did train hard. And then I realized and got an epitome that if I wanted to go places, this is what I had to do. It wasn't about the length of time you spent in the gym. It's what you actually do in the gym that matters. It's that last set of two or three exercises that basically makes or breaks the body or makes the body grow. And if you put your all out effort into them sets, you get the results. The problem is to put your head where your body needs to go for them sets. It doesn't sound like much, but it is in a place that in reality, you don't want legs to come around for the next seven days. You're happy that it's done and you're happy that you won't see it for seven days. And I think me and you have both spoke about this. It's that anxiety the night before because you know what's coming. You know, mm -hmm. you know that in order to put your heart and soul into that 45 minutes, it's going to hurt and you're going to pay the price for three or four days after it. So I think that's, that's the culture shock that people get when they start training hard. And uh, over the years, if you sort of put this in, well, I've built, what, 20 stone of muscle on a stage by doing this, do you know what I mean, in sort of 20 years. You know, it doesn't sound like much, but at the end of the day, when I step on stage now, I'm roughly 275, 280 pounds in shape. And that's all from four days a week, 45 minutes in the gym each day, you know. I'm pulling up a photo of you that was on your Instagram today where you were bending over picking up your trophy. Yeah, that's the 2014 World Championships. That's that's, so that's Mark's back, uh, for those of you who don't know, and that that's Mark's front. 
So just in case you're in any doubt about whether or not, and of course in the podcast people can't see this, but you should go and follow Mark um, on Instagram. He is the Irish Hulk with an underscore after Hulk. Um, So just in case anyone was in any doubt about whether Mark knows what he's talking about or not. I like that. I remember showing a photo of you to, I remember Emma showed me a photo, Emma, who it was, who had you know, told yeah. me to go on train with you. I remember she showed me a photo of you beside just an ordinary man, you know, right. I remember you, were like, you, know you were, you know, doing this, whatever you think you were shaking hands and, you know, you did yeah. a thumbs up. And I remember looking at him, looking at the photo going, holy smokes, I've never seen a bigger man in my entire life. I've never seen a more muscular man. And so, you know, I've always said to people, because, you know, if you want to do something in life, and you and, Mark, you and I are going over conversations we've had hundreds of times and the hundreds of training hours that we've spent together, yeah. but uh, we, we but we both love a good, a good yarn, so we don't mind going over them. But I remember saying to somebody, you know, loads of times, if you want to do something really, really well, find someone who's done what you want to do really, really well and just copy them, you know? Just like, them, right? just, and I know. think that you said that to me numerous times when I've spoke to you in business and bodybuilding and any way of life, you're 100% right. Why do something that somebody's already done perfect? Why not just copy the formula and do it? You know, at the end of the day, it was like Dorian Yates. When I seen him, uh, my eyes were blown and I thought, well, how did he get like that? And I went up to a guy called Graham McConkie, God rest his soul now, and uh, basically said to him, you know, how do you get big? And basically, he told me the exercise. It was about a half of what I was doing. I stuck to that plan, and voila, you got big. You know, there was nothing in it. You ate right, you trained hard, you took it to the gym, you put everything into it, and you copied a formula that already worked. And lo and behold, 15, 20 years later, it still works. Mark, how important is diet? Because women are so afraid to eat. Is this something you see whenever you train women? Massively, you know, a lot of women in the last 20 years when I've been coaching have came to me from varying eating disorders, afraid to eat, uh, you know, not eating over a thousand calories a day, eating under a thousand calories a day and expecting to get results and then saying to me, I don't want to look like you. And I'm turning around and going, listen, there's as much chance of me turning into a pig at this minute in time than you looking like me after 10 years, unless there's something massively exciting happening in your body that's going to, that's going to, you know, defy logic and defy physics, you know, but you're right. People don't want to eat because they've just basically listened to the mainstream shit on TV. And they've, they've sort of thought that skinny and all this, here's the way to go. If that's what you're, if that's what you want, fair play. But at the end of the day, if you want to pack on muscle, you have to eat. And the amount of food you can get away with eating is crazy. As long as you're training hard, you know, we've, we've spoken about this many a time, Kim, if you're training that hard, you need to feed the body. You need to, you know, you need to be in a calorie surplus. You need to be ramming carbohydrates in you in order to get the energy to lift that heavy. And you also need to be putting the protein in in order to facilitate muscle growth and repair. And like, if you're doing that and you're training that hard, you need massive amounts of foods, you know, well, massive amounts in terms of, you know, what, what is individual, but you need yeah, but in terms of your personal body composition. You yeah, know. your personal body composition, but you're, you're going to always need more food than you think. Like people say to me, they come to me saying, oh, I don't want to eat this, I don't want to eat that, I don't want to eat too much food. I put them in a diet, they're looking at it going, is that for a week? And I go, no, that's per day, per day. <laughs> and she's like, I couldn't eat that in a week. And I says, well, do you want to grow or not? They start eating this food and they realize one thing, they start getting leaner. They start getting stronger. They start getting more muscular, and they're going. This is a miracle. No, it's you're 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 just eating. You're doing things right now. It's nothing miraculous about it. You're just giving your body what it needs in order to get to where it needs to go or where you want it to go. But you're 100 percent right. One woman especially, um, and some men nowadays, because a lot of fellas now want to stay lean all year round and they're afraid to eat as well. But a lot of women come into the gym, and it's always the same problems you're trying to break down. Always the same barriers. They're all afraid to eat. They think if they eat too much or if they think they eat too much of the wrong things, they're going to get fat. And, like, you know, if you're getting fat, yes, you're probably not training hard enough and you're probably eating the wrong foods. But at the end of the day, I haven't seen somebody getting fat yet if they're eating good quality food and if they're training hard in the gym. Yeah, one of the things that you said to me years ago, which I just loved, and it's definitely a quote you should put on your Instagram, and you said, you know, food is nature's natural anabolic. You know, you don't yeah. need to take steroids. Food no. is what causes you to grow. Can you talk about that a bit more? I know you have already. A, but- lot of, a lot of fellas, whenever they look at me, think right away that I'm on a lot more than what I've actually used in the past. You know what I mean? And I won't Mark, let's be clear, you have actually used steroids. Yeah, yeah, I have. I've used, I've used a few, just once or twice in my life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but whenever I was in the off season, uh, I always used food. Uh, we were massive believers in copious amounts of food. I ate probably 
no word of a lie that got to seven or eight thousand calories in a day every day do you know what i mean um 400 500 grams of protein per day up to a thousand grams of carbohydrates a day and then the rest coming from fat and i would have done that whenever i was in my competing days i did on that seven days a week uh 365 days a year i was i was basically consistent i never missed a meal or missed very rare meals um and literally i always believed that in the off season as long as i was eating enough food i could always train hard and i think that's why whenever i did use any steroids i got actually a big bang from them because it wasn't overusing them and when my body needed them it got them but all other times i would have got all my all my calories from food i would have got everything i needed from food and i found that the energy that i got from eating all that food definitely transpired in the gym and I never noticed any difference really in strength and size um, when I was off gear when I was eating that food and then when I come pre-contest that's when I would have relied a wee bit more on the anabolics in order to bring in that tight conditioning but in terms of putting on muscle size as long as you're eating enough food it definitely is nature's anabolic it's more important like you can't sit in the house take a load of gear eat cheesy poofs drink coke not move and expect to grow muscle it's as simple as that so what is the conundrum you know you're injecting shit into your ass on a constant basis you're not going to grow unless you give it the blueprint to growth and that's food and training so no matter what people think about you know anabolics or anything else whether you're for or against people say oh i can't get big i can't compete with these guys because they're in steroids that's bollocks that's a cop-out you can literally compete with these guys as long as you're willing to put the work into the gym and as long as you're willing to put the work on the table and what i find a lot nowadays is guys are just uh, and girls are taking steroids more and more often in order to basically be lazy bollocks that's what it boils down to they don't want to put the work into the kitchen they don't want to put the work into the gym and they're just taking shortcuts so if you get somebody out there that's willing to be consistent with his training and willing to be consistent in his food they can absolutely hang with the guys that are taking gear because they tend to be lazier now yeah, that's true. That's true. And I remember whenever I first came to train with you and I said, you know, I really want, you know, and I was taking all kinds of, you know, natural stuff. But like, you know, I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, you were like, you know, you know, what's, what's your diet? Like I was like, well, I'm on L-glutamine and Lucian and I'm on this and I'm on Vitargo and I'm whatever. And you were like, yeah, you just, need, you just need to eat loads of food to love and just train really hard. You don't need all that shit. And I was like, no, no, but I'm really like supplementation. It's really important. You were like, well, yeah, it's important, but consistency is more important. Talk yeah. to us about that, Mark, about your belief but around consistency. You look at the amount of food you were able to eat. Like you, the first time you come to me, Kim, at the start, you look at the amount of food we pushed in you and how, did you ever get fat? Never, no. I mean, don't get me wrong. I wasn't like, I didn't have like a shredded no. six pack, but I wasn't fat in any You were never fat. Mode. And the amount of food, I think you were pushing well up to close to 3,000 or 3,000 above 3, calories. 3,500, 3, 800, I think it, Do you know what I mean? And, and all that all that food went to the gym and how good were your workouts? Yeah, really, really strong. Yeah. Like if you look at it, if you look at your workouts when you were eating that amount of food in comparison to when you were dieting, what was the difference? Yeah. Lack of food. So it just shows you if you want performance in the gym, you got to eat. Yeah, no, you're right. And what about consistency? Talk to us a bit more about consistency, Mark. If you were to say to me, what's the most important thing uh, in bodybuilding or anything, if your goals, I would say consistency. I remember a friend of mine, I think we chatted about this, said to me years ago, we, we both went to the gym at the same time. We were 15, we hadn't a clue, but we thought we were brilliant. We went into the gym, we trained, we'd done all over body parts, seven days a week, trained for three hours, done everything wrong that you could do. And this guy started off well ahead of me. He was bigger than me, he was stronger than me, he was leaner than me. And uh, he was sporadic at it. Whereas whenever I started, I got hooked and I kept at it. So I had done my reading, I focused on this, I watched this. I'd done everything I could and basically immersed myself in bodybuilding um, and stuck at it. I just loved it. I just loved the buzz from training. I just loved learning. I just loved, you know, thinking, right, I'm going to be up there and I'm going to beat all these guys at some stage. Even though I hadn't stepped on stage, I was beating everybody. So as far as I was concerned, I immersed myself in that knowledge, learned it. And uh, I remember it with Child's Christening, my first Child's Christening, about 15 years later uh, after bodybuilding, the same guy come up to me and he goes to me, imagine if I had kept at that, because I was better than you. You know, I was bigger than you, I was stronger than you, I was better than you. So imagine I had kept that, and I go, that's the point, you didn't. I consistently did this and got here. You didn't, you dropped off. You done what thousands every week, you're done what nine and 10 people do all the time. They start something and they don't finish it. They're not willing to be consistent. And that is the biggest thing. If you're consistent with your diet, you're consistent with your training, you're consistent with your nutrition, your cardio, all them variables, you will get results. You will, not there's perfect, no- Not Mark, and let's make a distinction. You don't mean perfect, do you? No, consistent, perfect. I'm not perfect. I go to Bodine's every week with a family. I eat shit, I drink Coca-Cola, I do things that are off the diet. But I try every day to hit my macros. I try every day for 400 grams of protein to get in. I get it in. Will there be the odd bad meal through? 
in? Absolutely. But for me, it's about getting the calories in. Will there be the odd bad workout? Absolutely. Will there be the odd missed cardio day? Absolutely. But I don't dwell on it. You know, if I miss one, I'm back up doing it the next day. If I have a bad meal on the Wednesday night um, on the diet, I'm back on the diet on Thursday morning. It's the consistency over a period of time that gets you the results, not perfection. You don't need to be perfect. All you have to be is be consistent. Keep a goal in your mind. Hit every variable that you can on a continual basis, and eventually you'll get where you want to go. Yeah, Mark, you've taught me so much over the years about bodybuilding, but I'm going to tell you the main thing that you have taught me more than anything, which shines through in everything I teach in all these groups, is that it's just to be relaxed about things as well. Yeah. Now, when I say relaxed, I don't mean relaxed as in like, you know, ah, oh, sure, you're on it one day and you're off the other day. Be consistent. But, you know, I used to say to you, um, because I just saw a question come up, actually, which I'm going to ask you in a second, but I used to say, oh, but what will happen if I do this? What will happen to that? And you used to be like, yeah, it's fine. Just, yeah, 30 minutes cardio, just stick at it. That's fine. Oh, but what about if you do this? Well, you missed me. It doesn't matter. Get back on it. You're totally fine. And, you know, I used to be like, oh, but Mark, you know, I do I need to track all my weights? You know, and, and I guess what I'm trying to say is there's many people who come in and they go, right, I need to track my foot and track my weights and track my supplements and I, I did this this week and this this week and you used to be like yeah if you're really strong today just lift as heavy as you can possibly lift and yeah. ah, next week you might not be feeling it so you might not be able to push that hard but always give it your best and always try it you've ne you haven't tracked your weight sure you haven't Never. in many years talk just about the, a lot of my women are really obsessive about tracking I track I don't I've track never food. Tracked. why I don't never track. track talk just about tracking and its importance or not importance if you have to do it, do it. But for me personally, I've got to a point now where I know that 100 grams of oats looks like by just scooping it into a bowl. I know what 200 grams of steak looks like by just looking at it. I know what the vegetable count looks like. So I just wing it, to be honest with you. It's close enough for me. I don't think it needs to be 100% important. But what, what I like about or why I like the relaxed approach, Kim, I get into bodybuilding because I loved lifting weights. I enjoyed training. You know what I mean? And for me, I never wanted to lose that enjoyment because it was that enjoyment that made me go to the gym and train hard. It was that enjoyment that made me do the food. It was that enjoyment that took me through the stages of prep when it was hard. So for me, if I took that enjoyment out of it, I, I started hating it. I started looking at it as a job. And when I started looking at it as a job, I started to resent it. So for me, early on, I found that when I was being too meticulous with things, I started resenting the training. It started to appear in my, in my training sessions. It started to appear in my food. And as a result, I started to lose the love for training. I wasn't wanting to go. And I kind of stripped things back and thought about it after a while. And I realized, Mark, I'm doing this because I love doing it. So when the love goes, that's it gone. And I think that's why even to the day, I still love training so much because I don't be as meticulous as people. I know what I have to do and I do it, but I make it as enjoyable as possible. I make my meals enjoyable as possible in the off season so that I look forward to eating them. And even pre-contest, I make them as enjoyable as possible. If I have to lock down the hatches to get that prime condition four to six weeks out, so be it. But I will never do it as the, at the enjoyment or, or at the expense of enjoying it or at the expense of other things in my life. Like, You've known me for a while now, Kim. If I ever been neglectful to family or work or anything when I've been on a prep, you know, no. if I ever come into the gym trailing my feet, do you know what I mean? There's days you're tired, like you've said, and the workouts suffer. But in the base of things, nothing should suffer while you're on prep. Yes, you might have to make a few choices to do something, not sacrifices. To me, they're choices. I choose to live a bodybuilder's lifestyle. I choose to eat six meals a day. I choose to go to the gym and train because I love it. So for me, they're not sacrificial. I would never see a scenario in life that I'll never train. I will never see a scenario in life that I will never eat 80% of my diet healthy. To me, that, that's my lifestyle. And to me, I choose that lifestyle and I enjoy that lifestyle. So therefore, I'm going to stick at it. So for me, it's that enjoyment that keeps me relaxed and not tracking anything. Like I don't lift a weight in the gym. I come into a gym like you've said. And if I'm feeling great, I'll push hard. That's why I don't believe in all this deload, you know, have a deload week. What about in that deload week? You feel great, and that's when you break records. Well, then go in and break records. You know, if you feel fantastic in the gym, you train your nuts off in order to break as many records as you can. Days that you aren't feeling it, you come in and you just coast through it if that's what you have to do. Listen to your body. Your body will tell you everything you need to know in bodybuilding. It'll tell you when you need a rest. It'll tell you when you need to eat. It'll tell you when you can train harder. It'll tell you when you can pull back. And I think if you keep the enjoyment aspect and you keep listening and being tuned with your body, you'll fall in love with it and your results will be far, far superior than somebody that's forcing them.
Yeah. And I think I, what you're saying or what I hear from what you're saying is it's you definitely have a plan and have a goal, but remain Massively. flexible, remain flexible in it. Yeah. Like you said, if, if a deload week is in your plan and you're feeling as strong as you can possibly, you know, as you're feeling strong, go and do that. I'm doing that at the minute with like back training. Obviously, I don't have the same back machines in my gym as you do. You know, we just, yeah. just got seated row with lap pull down loads of things. And now I have a really big back now anyway. And so I've yeah. been doing a loads of pull ups. So I've been doing lap pull down. And then I was like, you know what I really want to get stronger at pull-ups so I'm going to do loads of pull-ups so I do a lap pull down seated row and then I do um a close grip pull-up I'm doing chin-ups I'm doing wide grips and I'm just pulling and pulling and pulling and I'm loving doing exactly. the pull-up exactly you're loving it you're, I'm loving you're enjoying doing, it I'm loving the challenge and my back is growing and growing and growing and my lats you know I always wanted to work on my lower lats more yeah. my lower lats are really popping out and all I've done is add in pull-ups yeah. because you're and, enjoying it as well yeah. you know it's not a chore when you enjoy to do something if you're going to that gym with that spark and that want and that desire I get six last week I want eight today and you go in with that motivation and you go in with that desire to want it you're going to get it and that's what's going to spur you on you took a couple of that enjoyment with that consistency and if you've got a recipe for success right there in a bottle you know what i mean it doesn't need to get complicated it doesn't mean to be overthinked or overthought it just has to be done i come in now this last few weeks kim and my training has taken a massive step and i think i was telling you this on tuesday about how motivated i am about it. and all i done was go back to basics i remember the way i trained low volume heavy weights can't train as heavy anymore because unfortunately i've torn my body up that much over the past 25 years that it's decided to fight back against me but that doesn't mean that i can't find other ways around making things feel heavy and i've come back into the last three weeks i'm watching we podcast dorian yates videos ronnie coleman before a train i'm coming into the gym i'm copying their workouts and i'm absolutely loving my training again no i'm not dead lifting 300 kilos or squatting 300 kilos anymore but i'm just doing what i need to do taking the muscle to failure putting my head in that last set again and i'm absolutely walking out of the gym buzzing i've got that b back in my bonnet no kim don't worry i'm not going to compete we're not going to go down that road again just before you say anything but i'm loving the training aspect of things i'm loving pushing myself i'm loving training on my own at the moment and i'm just getting things done and like you said like we said i'm being consistent and most of all i'm enjoying every minute of it here, what would you say to someone? This group is a is a new group. Like I said, we have 24,000 people in this group. We just ran a five-day shredded body challenge. We have quite a lot of very overweight people in the group um, and women who are um, struggling not to know where to start because we gave them a really good plan and we just opened yeah. the 18-month Sculpt and Shred. So we've had loads of people join the Sculpt and Shred, which is obviously a, a long-term program. But if someone came to you, um, I just love to know your thoughts on it. If someone came to you very overweight, let's say they had, um, let's say they had four stone. What's four stone yeah, in pounds? Yeah. Like 40, 50, 40, say, about 60 20, pounds yeah, they lose. 40, say yeah, they like 60, 60 to 100 pounds. pounds to lose. Yeah. And they came to you and they said, Mark, I want to, I want to be, you know, not even ripped, but I want to be lean and I want to be muscular. And, you know, how do I do it? What, what kind of a plan would you put them on? Well, number one, I would make it I would make it goal set. And so the first thing we would do, we'd have to talk to that person and basically be realistic about how long it's going to take. Because let's yeah. face facts, if you've 60 pounds to lose, you're not going to be ripped in 12 weeks. Do you know what I mean? That's the bottom line. So you have to look and you have to set a realistic goal. The second thing you'd have to look at in that realistic goal is what can this person commit to? I get a lot of people in the gym that can commit to seven days a week for the first four weeks, then they fall off the wagon and then they never come back on it again. So if this person is a busy, um, she's got kids or she can commit to three to four days a week, you're better being consistent with them three or four days a week um, and getting that nailed down first before going into anything else. So the first few things would be taking her lifestyle into consideration. Now, she has to be you know, willing to make a few changes and uh, basically meet you halfway. If she's only willing to go to the gym once a week, we're screwed from day one. But if she's willing to put a bit of effort in, you have to make it work our lifestyle as well as that not trying to be cheeky but most people that are 60 pound to 100 pound overweight have it issues with their diet do you know what i mean so we have to clean that up from day one now again that doesn't mean that we go from eating 4,000 calories of pure shite to eating 1,000 calories of clean food so all we have to do is knock out a few things and bring that into a calorie deficit for starting with couple that with a wee bit of cardio and you've got your starting point do you know what i mean once you get that starting point, it's just a matter of tracking it on a weekly or fortnightly basis, just making sure that it's measurable. You know, the weights are going down, the weight's going down. Like, let's face it, if you're 60 pounds to lose, the scales are probably going to be your best gauge at this stage because fat is going to come off, weight's going to come off, you know. And basically give it a long term, set small goals like we need to lose eight pounds this month or whatever, and just consistently check in on them. And again, make the process as painless and enjoyable as possible and basically amalgamate it into their life. But at the same time, 
you have to be realistic and you have to make quantifiable goals because there's no point saying to somebody, right, you've 60 pounds to lose it, let's do it over 18 months. It needs to be tracked that there's certain goals in between. Like, for example, the phases on the, the sculpt and shred, it's broken into phases. So get and them phases weeks, yeah. Yeah, where they're short-term goals and then be at a certain point every every six weeks. If you're not there, you could potentially go over the phase again. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that's basically what to do. You need to set goals that's going to keep you in for 18 months because 18 months is too vague. If you say mm-hmm. to somebody, we're going to, we're going to lose fat in a year, it doesn't give them any quantifiable measurement of how long, how much, et cetera, et cetera. And then the other thing is just be patient. A lot of people want to lose £100 in 10 days. It's not possible. Be patient with the results and stick with it. Even if the girl across the street has lost £20 in six weeks, you're not the girl across the street. Don't measure yourself against her. Measure yourself against yourself. Do you know what I mean? This is one of the biggest mistakes I see. Oh, such and such has lost £10 in a week. So what? Do you know what I mean? You're not such and such. Work on your own shit. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. You know, keep yourself on the right track. Keep yourself motivated. If you need help, use the groups. Use whatever you've got around you. You know, people have similar experiences. They're doing similar things, you know, and just try to always stay motivated or talk to somebody that can actually tell you, well, yes, you only, you, the one I love, I only lost two pounds this week. Did you ever see what two pounds actually looks like? Do you know what I mean? It is a I'm hell yeah, is... two pound of fat. It's a hell of a lot of weight. I see people saying to me all the time, I was disappointed this week, I've only lost two pounds. I'm looking at them and go, Do you, do you know what two pound is? Like, do you ever see two pound of butter? It's a lot of weight. So yeah. I think people expect to lose these big magic numbers because such and such down the road that's doing a detox green tea drink once a day and eating frig all else, do you know what I mean, is losing £10 every two weeks. That's not sustainable. It's not realistic and it's not sustainable. So set yourself a goal, set yourself realistic goals and just basically stay motivated all the time as much as possible. One of the things and if you I fall do. off the wagon, get back on it again. Don't beat yourself up with it yeah. because trust me, I've won X amount of bodybuilding titles and I fell off the wagon every prep. Do you know what I mean? There hasn't been one prep that I've done dieting for my shows that I haven't cheated at least four to six times per diet. What I love about you, Mark, is that you always, and all the stories you tell about all the hundreds, thousands of people you've worked with, you always come back to, you know, you always try and work work with the person. One of the um, one of the stories that always stuck in my mind, I guess, was I think it was someone that you were working with, and she had a lot of weight to lose, and and she, you had given her a diet. You asked her to track her food, and she came back. And she was drinking like eight bottles of Coke a day or something, and <laughs> you was, and she was like, "I'm going to cut them out," and you were like, "No, no, no, no! Like, don't cut them all out in one go because you're absolutely going to yeah. fall." Well, what if you cut down to like six bottles a day? Like, do you think you could do six? And you had her gradually over time yeah. cut down on the Coke rather than just yeah. it all away because you realized. It was too much to ask her to do it all in one go. I know who you're talking about. And like at the end of the day, she's actually lost probably about five or six stone and kept it off. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't know who it is. You didn't tell me the name. You just told me the story. Still has the old bottle of Coke and still gets on with things. And believe it or not, she's still coming to me to this day. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's years ago. But you're 100% right, Kim. You don't have to take everything out at once. If you're used to eating bad food, the worst thing you can do and the easiest way to fall off the wagon is completely strip everything back. And I see it happen all the time. It's called the Monday syndrome. Everybody's starting on Monday. And come Monday, they're eating their bad food on Sunday night, right up to 12 o'clock at night. They're filling their faces full of Chinese sweets, chocolate. Monday morning, they're on the oats and they're on the strawberries and they're on the chicken and broccoli. And by Wednesday, they're back on the Coca-Cola again. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that's it. And they'll not try it again for at least six months to a year. And they'll fail again and again and again. And it's because they haven't put in a clear and concise plan of just st- stepping things down and down and down as they go along. And that is the biggest the biggest way you're going to feel as we're trying to do much, too much too soon. When I start dieting for a show, say I, say I start off in the off-season at 7,000 calories, my first drop for week one is down to 6,500 and 20 minutes cardio a day. That's mm-hmm. it. And I'll run that for as many weeks as I can until I stop losing weight, and then I'll drop it down to maybe 6,200 and I'll maybe add in another five minutes cardio. And I'll continually do that till we get the six weeks out. And by six weeks out, I'll be nearly ready to step on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, and by that, I've maybe only went up to 45 minutes to an hour, um, maybe an hour and a half. It all depends on how much I've got to lose and what time frame I want to do it. But it's never done in one go. It's always done in stages so that I never really see it coming in. And the food's always dropped out in stages. 
Talk to us, Mark, about um, like you have five children, so yeah. four biological and, and one stepson. Yeah. And, you know, obviously a wife, you own your own gym. You are, you know, tr you're a personal trainer. You train online. You're always doing interviews and whatever. And, you know, you're a busy, busy man. But yet you still manage to fit in all your food and fit in your training and fit in your cardio. And you've, you know, I've heard stories, by the way, and I don't think this is recommended that uh, after the birth of Mark's first child, oh, uh, uh, that uh, he went uh, to visit his wife in the hospital or was there with her in the hospital and kind of she was like you want to go and train don't you like lying there with like Clea in her arms like you know 30 minutes old and he was like yeah I kind of do she was like well you go to the gym and I'll see you later and Mark was yeah. like okay bye the, the funny thing about that was the training part of the time I sent him a video I sent him a text message with a wee girl's face on it saying baby you're born and he rep on oh, no, congratulations mate and that was all that was said you know and then Half an hour later, an hour later, I text him going, yeah, I'm going to be down training now. And he texts me back saying, why were you not going to? And I was like, I just had a baby. And he's like, that's no fucking excuse to not train the day. Is the baby, is Lee training? Is the baby training? You're training. Get, get down here. You'll be sure to one. And I think, uh, I think, I think Clea was born in January the 3rd. I'm going to get the date right here. I'm going to get slapped. January the 3rd. And uh, I went on to be Mr. Northern Ireland three months later. Mr. Britain a month after that, and Mr. Europe two weeks after that. So, and that was all while having my first child. You know, every time I have a child born, somebody says to me, "Oh, you're better keeping this year out because you're not being able to compete." And every year that happens, I end up winning another title. So, it it, it can be done. Now, to be fair, I have massive a massive support network in Lee. Lee does nearly everything for me. She'll cook me food. She'll help me. She's never once in the whole time I've been with her ever said not to train. So that helps massively. If your support network is as good as mine, then you're on a one right away. It, it was, it, she makes it so easy um, and it, it definitely helps me, you know what I mean? Even when the times that I'm tired, she doesn't expect you to do much. Um, it's, it's, it's fantastic and I think I definitely can say I definitely wouldn't be where I am today without her and the kids, there's no doubt with that. Talk to me though about so a lot of the excuses we hear, um, you know, from from women are, oh, I would love to, but I just don't have the time. I'm a shift worker, you know, I work shifts, uh -huh. and you know, and or I can't, you know, I or I have young kids at home, or and listen, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they're, you know, we all have limitations. I built. Yeah a fucking business and train to be a stage athlete being a stay-at-home mom yeah. to four young kids for homeschooled kids I didn't, I didn't even get them out to, to school and i managed to do it so i don't really buy into people's excuses i'm like no. if it's a you, you'll find a way if it's not you'll find an excuse but talk to us about your advice for someone who really does feel limited in terms of what they can do you know and they're and they're new to training they're new to this and they they're not really sure how they're going to fit it all in what would your advice to them be like start slow or make a yeah, plan the first thing i would say is to get some Someday. You don't have to hire a coach. Sometimes, obviously, money can be a limiting factor. But find somebody that has been through or is, is coaching people through them experience. Like the programs you supply, Kim, they've got factual, they've got tons of information there that gives people a fantastic start in what they're doing. Do you know what I mean? So find somebody or go and do a wee bit of research on what you have to do. And always realize you don't have to jump in at the deep end and do seven days a week. Make a commitment to yourself of how many days that you can genuinely do. Now, that means having a good talk to yourself because let's face it, we all like letting ourselves off the hook do you know what i mean but if you can physically people are going to go i can only do two days a week can you really only do two days a week or is that all you want to do you know you have to remember right this is an investment in your health and it will take away how you look but it's an investment in your health and it's gonna it's gonna benefit you in later life whether people think that or not this is a massive investment into how you look how you feel how you're going to look later on in life, your health, etc., etc. So for me, you can't put a price in that. Do you know what I mean? And for me, you know, you have to treat that in the terms of your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. This is going to stand by you. So then look at it from that perspective and go, right, maybe I can commit to four days a week. Right, fantastic. That's a good start. Get a program that's going to shoot you four days a week and stick to it. If you're 80 or 90 percent, stick into that plan all the time you know, you can get massive results in that. Do you know what I mean? And at the end of the day, as it goes on and you want to do more, then add it in. But like you said yourself, I'm not one to buy into excuses. Like, you know, my wife, Lee, she was training, was it nine months pregnant, Kim? She was doing legs that day in the gym. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And there's videos up on my Instagram of a nine months. Literally, I think it was the day Callie was born. She was then doing legs in the gym. It's a wonder he wasn't sticking out the other end, but he was coming out that night and, uh, you know, she was doing legs that morning and into the gym. I got a phone call in the gym. I was training. She texted, she rang me and she said, I was getting ready for show as well again. Um, and she rang me and says, listen, uh, not to alarm you, but I've just went into labor. But finish your training session, then come home. I think we have to go to the hospital. So I finished my training session. The guy in the gym is looking at me going, what the fuck are you doing? Your wife just told you she's in labor. Would you get the fuck home? So he rushed through it. I rushed through it. We went home, took Lee to the hospital. Uh, I 
or Cali was born, uh, I then went and trained shoulders and biceps in Elite before lifting the kids, taking them back to the hospital, lifting Lee. And then we ended up in Streamville Farm where she was in the back of the I will tractor. never forget the day I saw, like for anyone here who has had children naturally, right, vaginally, yeah. I remember seeing a picture of Lee, Mark's wife, sitting in, you know, one of those little, little those little like uh, cart things that they pull around behind like a, a you know, a, what do you call it, a quad bike, you know, so yeah. and it's called, they call it like the, the something train and you sit in these wee things and it's like a sidecar and a motorbike and Lee was sitting in that, you were obviously holding the baby and yeah. or even the pram or something and Lee was there with Hestia on her knee. Now, Callie is baby number five, by the way, guys. So she's done this a few times before. But she was sitting there, like, and this thing, you you bounce and bump, but don't, but don't, but don't, and you go down the thing, and it goes, takes you all around. And I was thinking, that woman just gave birth like four hours ago. What did she do before? And how is she even sitting? I was like, oh, I was like wincing for her, like imagining was, I your wife is a trooper. Let me tell you, mad, I have. But- but that's what I mean. That that story basically it, it solidifies. There is no excuses. Like she's five kids. You've you've been up in her gym, Kim. The kids are falling around. They're going mental. She's lunging up and down with one on an arm, one over the shoulder, one between the legs. You know, she never misses a training session. You know what I mean? Like not even me. You know, I, I think women when they're when they're on form can do a lot more than men can, and that's being honest with you. So, right. you know, I would say she's definitely you know the epitome of the rule. If you're going to turn around and say to me, I have three kids, I'm looking at you going seriously. I five, and I'll get you a woman in now that's going to lunge up and down here with two kids hanging off her. Hanging There's off no it. excuses for that shit. Do you know what I mean? After that day in Streamville Farm, she then came back to the gym with me, sat with the kids in the thing while I trained chest and triceps. So there again, it goes with the support network. But look, realistically, you have to be honest with yourself. There's no point, you know, there's no point fooling yourself about what you can or can't do. If you can build a business, train and get your body and physique, turn pro, you know, I can do it with five kids, Lee can do it with five kids. What's anybody's excuse, really? Do you know what I mean? And, and like, that's why I don't listen to excuses. You know, at the end of the day, I've heard them all. If you really, really, really want to get where you want to go that goal needs to be bigger than all the excuses you can make and if all you're going to do is make excuses i'm sorry you're setting yourself up for a fail from day one and like i said of some of the women that i've come in contact with over the years kim lee etc etc no excuse works for me anymore because i've seen it all and i've seen people getting through it like so i just sat back going yeah you're full of shit you don't You'd want almost it have more respect for people who just turn up and said mark it's really just not that important to me yeah. honestly mark i just couldn't be arsed to go to the gym i was too fucking tired i was lying on the sofa and i made an excuse and i didn't go i'm sorry you then, then you can work with that if someone comes yeah. to you and goes mark seriously i just can't fucking motivate myself to to get to get off the sofa to go to the gym whatever you'd be like right okay well at least you're being honest we can work with that but when someone's like yeah. oh my car broke down and um, my husband wasn't home from work and you can't work with lies you can't coach someone who's lying to you because you can't coach you can't coach a lie you can only coach the truth you can only help someone through a limitation when they admit it's a limitation that's it and what they're saying inevitably is like you said they don't want it enough so if they don't want it enough not being cheeky here why do i want it for them do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. at the end of the day you need to want this shit otherwise you're not going to put the work in the people that i see succeeding in the gym have a goal have a plan and they stick to it and that's what makes them get where they are they don't talk about you know reasons not to train they just get on with it they make time and they get put things in place so that they can get to the gym you know we run a gym up there that literally as you know yourself kim we let people take their kids mothers take their kids there's no issue um and they train away so they can't turn around and say i'm not going to the gym because kids aren't allowed my kids are on about there every day it's mm-hmm. a wonder one of them hasn't get hit by a barbell the amount of swinging off things they're doing but it, it, make, it helps me train, it helps Lee train, and it just motivates other people to do it, do you know what I mean? And we try to create that atmosphere for people that they feel comfortable, that they can train and take the kids to it. Because let's face it, if you take that excuse out, what's the next excuse, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Once you the know, next excuse comes in, you know that it's just full of shit, you know? What I love as well, and this is actually a really good tip for people, um, and it's the it was the first couple of experiences that I had. So uh, people who say, oh, well, I don't have any time, there are gyms that will welcome families. And when I say welcome yeah. families, it's not like, I don't mean there's a crash. And, and just let me give you an example. The first ever gym I, I the first ever gym I trained in was David Lloyd, um, which is a commercial kind of, I call it a fucking middle class cardio gym. But um, it's I trained there. And then I also trained in another gym called Better Gym, which is one of these um, franchise type gyms. And so there was like a no kid rule. Your kid wasn't even allowed to walk in the door of the gym. They weren't even allowed to be inside because of insurance, you know. 
And so I just assumed that was the way it was. And then whenever the, my other kids started doing um, parkour, free running, there was a gym above it, which was Olympus Gym where you used to work years ago. Yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking, oh, this is great when they're at parkour, I can train in the gym. So I just always find a way. It was like kids are doing activities. Yeah. And anytime the kids are doing activities, I was like, is there a gym nearby? I can train when they're doing their activities. So I went into the gym this day into Olympus and I had Jack by the hand because he was quite young. And I said, I'm really sorry. I said, you know, would you mind if my little boy just sits over on the sofa? He won't be, you know, he won't be in the way. And I remember forget one of the guys said to me here listen we we all have families you need to you need to do what you need to do your son's welcome here and i remember thinking oh my god that's that's amazing yeah. and then i came to your gym and you you were the same you know you'll go into the cafe there'll be kids sitting with their ipads you know while yeah. their moms are training or in their prams and the dads are training and i so a tip for anybody who really thinks that they can't find the time is if you find more of a bodybuilding gym uh, you know more a of a community gym hardcore gym a community gym not like a commercial yuppie gym if you yeah. find a gym that's family run family owned where the actually where the pros train you might think oh i don't want to go there i'll be all intimidated yeah. because they're all professionals no because those are people who are serious about their training and they know that sometimes you have to bring your child to the gym with the ipad because that's the only yeah. way you can get your training in and that has been my experience mark has that been yours as well but definitely 100 percent. see the smaller gyms like you're right kim you're 100 percent. the hardcore gyms do get a bad rap from especially women looking at these muscly men coming in nine times out of ten you'll find that these guys are going to be the most approachable guys you're going to get because they are serious about the training and if you come in there and strike up a conversation with anybody that's serious about training you're piquing their interest nine, you know i'm saying ten times out of ten they're going to point you in the right direction and like you said yourself we all have to get ways to get it done i've seen lee you know heading away to eyebrows and saying to me right the three kids are upstairs there on their ipads and then the next thing the three of them come tearing into the gym it doesn't stop me training do you know what i mean at the end of the day if i can do it Lee can do it, Kim can do it, anybody can do it, but it's just doing a wee bit of research and finding out where it works. And nine times out of ten, it's the smaller family-run community gyms that are going to cater for this because they understand what people need. They're not there to make money. They are there to make money, obviously, but they're not there as you just a number. They're there for you. They're there to help you get your goals. They're there to help you succeed in your goals. And if that means taking your child then, or even mine, the child, Lee's been mine and kids. I went into the, the kitchen the odd time and she's sitting there with a clatter kid. She looks like old Mother Hubbard half the time. Do you know? I mean there's that many swinging off or iPads going left right and center but you know it gives a nice feel to the gym and it shows that people are approachable and people are help and like you say do your research and that find out places that are going to you know help you and find out places that are going to help you achieve your goal regardless and like I say the other thing is don't let excuses overrun be honest with yourself you know at the end of the day if you take a good look like if you have a bad workout don't walk out and go what people are doing now based it based it no you didn't you had a shit workout admit it to yourself that was crap it could have been better you know, outline the ways it could be better. The problem in this game a lot of the time is everybody wants to talk shit and lie. Be honest with yourself at every point. Be honest with yourself what can you do. Be honest with yourself what time you've got. And I guarantee you, you'll definitely enjoy it better and you'll get a hell of a lot further in this game by just being honest in every respect. Yeah, don't, don't put too much pressure on yourself. I no. think it's like be consistent, but don't try to be like, you know, I think that's the difference. Like, definitely show up and definitely be consistent, but don't be like, it must be perfect and it must be amazing. I must eat all my food and I must do the whatever. Just do your best. Show up every day. Keep going. Keep your head down. Figure out a way to make it happen. And you'll look back in a year or two years or five years and go, holy crap, look how far yeah. I've come. I always say to people when they walk in the gym door, remember this workout. Right? This was shit. Remember this workout. And in six months' time, remember back to this and realize, Jesus, look at that. You know, I've had women come into the gym, never set foot in the gym. We take them around the gym, we get them a few basics. And I always say at the end, remember this workout. And then six months later, there wasn't around the gym on their own. And I come back to them sometimes, go, do you remember that first workout? And they want to know, I can't believe how far I came. And I said, there you go. That's progress. That's yeah. progress. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, yeah. Mark, are you happy to take a few questions before we finish? Yeah, you tear away. Yeah, 100%. Our questions have been loads of questions come up. I'm just going to grab a few, a few quick, uh, a few quick fire ones. I'm scrolling back up. People are horrified that I didn't tell them this was happening. We'll <laughs> but do guys, it again. We'll, anyone, do it again. we'll do it again. I know I really, and this, you know, people loved the last interview we did. It got so much, so many reviews on, on the podcast. So that's why I want to do it again. But guys, just for those of you who have joined, this is going to be a replay in the group. It's also going to be a podcast episode, which is going to go out next Thursday. So you can absolutely catch it there. Okay, so we have a question from Ellen Mitchell, and she is asking, if we are eating all healthy food, why do we need to take vitamins? Should we not be getting it from food? What's your Good take? Good question. On? Yeah, I would say, you know, number one, uh, don't supplements are supplemental to the diet, which means they should be supplemented with the diet. But certain supplements like vitamin C, vitamin E, things like that, that you're not going to get the full amounts 
from just eating normal foods, especially if you're on a diet. Sometimes what you'll find is some of the things that you're looking at, like omega threes and things, are all going to be lacking. So for me personally, I couldn't get the amount of vitamins that I would need. Uh, vitamin E, vitamin D three, for example, uh, zinc, magnesium, any of them there, I couldn't get them all from food, especially when I'm in a pre-contest diet. So they are essential, and they are essential to be supplemented. But what I think the big thing that I need to emphasize is most of your dietary requirements need to be had from food even your protein mm -hmm. to a degree you know what i mean protein powders are there use them when you need them but also try to stock up with food every supplement that you take should always be supplemental to the diet but yes they, they are necessary like i even protein for example i could not get the amount of protein that i need per day by just eating it's impossible i i take in roughly about 450 to 500 grams of protein per day. I could not physically eat that amount of protein, so I need to supplement with protein powders in order to hit that daily. So I'll end up taking something like maybe four to six to eight scoops a day, depending on my daily requirements for protein and how far on I'm on the diet. You know, because if my calories are down from fats and carbs, I definitely need to be taking in more isolates and things from protein so to have it. So I do think they are essential. I do think they're necessary, but I also think you need to put food first. And also, guys, until you have watched Mark Getty crack 12 eggs into a pint glass <laughs> and drink them raw. You <laughs> haven't actually lived. Christina has told me about that now. Christi so Christina, my COO, is now training with Mark. She trains yeah. with him every day. Because I train mostly at home. I just go and train legs with Mark now. And Christina has replaced me. She trains every she day with Mark. It. And Mark will crack 12 eggs into a, into a pint glass and then literally just... <laughs> and I watch him. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, you know, whenever you're watching someone else be sick and you feel like you're going to be sick yourself, I'm like, I'm like, that's an old school thing. thing. That's, that's an old school thing. I've been doing that for about 25 years. Thankfully, I haven't caught salmonella or anything yet. But oh, Mark. I think the stomach's maybe completely pro. Yeah. All that the amount of it is, right. you know? Here, listen, a couple more questions. Um, quickly, Mark, what do you do for cardio, Mark? Someone wants to know. Off season, very little. Uh, you know, again, I probably should be doing more off season, especially now. But I do very yes, little. I, should, um, I recommend cardio every day in order to get fitter and push more load. I would agree with. You. I would one hundred percent agree with here. you. Um, and normally, because I'm walking around the gym doing that many steps, that counts for my cardio. Plus, I'm twenty one, twenty two stone, so it feels the cardio when you're walking from machine <laughs> to machine. But yeah, if I was to give my younger self any advice, I would say to keep cardio in the off season. I would. That's probably the biggest mistake I've made throughout my bodybuilding career. And as I've got older, I've come to realize realize that because there has been times that my health has suffered uh, with kidneys, heart, etc. And I do believe the cardio would have played a part in not letting that happen. Um, Pre-contest, I start off at 20 minutes on an inclined treadmill um, at about four uh, miles an hour, kilometers an hour, degrading to four. And basically, I'll just up the intensity as we go along with that until I do 20 minutes at the start. I have went as high as two hours a day, um, depending on how far in I am. Um, mm -hmm. I've done an hour in the morning and an hour at night. Um, there's other times I've stopped at 90 minutes. It just all depends on the amount of fat. But anywhere between 20 minutes and 120 minutes a day, usually is my pre-contest cardio. Here, Mark, you'll laugh at this. <laughs> Can you see that? <laughs> no more winding over 150 grams of protein. <laughs> the, I could do that in one meal. No problem. <laughs> you know I mean? Okay, here's a really good question. Um, uh, oh, there's two. Okay, there's two really good questions, and I actually have a massage in five minutes, but he can do oh, it for me. It's fine. Him, he's, here. he's here to give it. He comes every Thursday to give me a massage. This is a really good one. No matter what I do, when I eat, uh, when I eat to gain muscle, uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, well, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. What grows is my belly fat. Nothing else. It's frustrating and it makes me give up sometimes. What? advice do you have for this person mark you're probably not eating the right foods and you're probably not going to go out on a limb here but you're not training hard enough that's the two things that i would put my finger on if i was looking at that question and you were coming in to see me the two things i would want to address is the intensity of your training um the progression of your training and also what kind of foods are you eating and also how many uh you know you're saying there you're eating calories for bulking if i was bulking and i started on three thousand calories my first uh up would be three thousand two hundred it's not massively overheating you know you stage up to it you don't go from three thousand to four thousand to five thousand you go from three thousand to three thousand two or three hundred to three thousand six hundred to three thousand nine hundred and you keep assessing that every few weeks to make sure that the the, the, the the gain the excess weights gain isn't going around your belly so for me personally i would say the two things to address in that and again we're back to honesty and truth is be honest with yourself when it comes to your food be honest with yourself when it comes to how much overeating have you checked what your maintenance calories is. Again, not your TDE, your actual maintenance calories is. The way I work that out is have a period of a couple of weeks, 
you know, take in 3,000 calories or whatever it is. If your weight doesn't go up and you stay the same, this is your maintenance calories. So that is important to find out what your actual maintenance calories is and then just step it up to 100. Well, we taught, them, we taught everybody that in the five-day challenge this week. We yeah. literally took them through that step by step. Well, that is massively important. You need to know where you're at when you start and then you need to know how much to drop it or up it by. And I would say for anybody, it only goes up a couple of hundred at a time. Do you know what I mean? And you don't need to put it up every week or every two weeks. It can be every month, every six weeks. Again, this is person dependent. And you have to be honest with the weight you're putting on. And then you also have to be honest, how productive are your workouts? Are you really, really intensely training? And are you training to failure? Because I can tell you, if I put my three, I can tell you now, 100% of people, if they came to me, and they would up 200 calories at a time and train the way I want them to train, you ain't putting on bad fat yeah. anywhere in your body. It's impossible because your body will need them extra calories to recover from what I'm going to do to you in the gym. It's I always say, that. try and increase your intensity before you increase your calories. Or yeah. if you increase your calories, increase your intensity even more than your calories. People, let's go back to what we said at the very start. People think, and I'm not trying yeah, to you know, down anybody's they're training. training. Yeah. People think they're training hard until they actually find out what hard training is. Trust me, I was one of them people until I found out what hard training mm -hmm. is. And I left my soul in the toilet more times than enough, do you know what I mean, whenever I realised what hard training was. And it is hard. It's not easy. You're not walking out of the gym. I'm not walking out of the gym on leg day going, that was amazing. I'm walking out of leg day crying, trying to hold back what's running out of my leg and really thinking, thank fuck that's not for another week. When people week. say to me, oh, I love training legs, I'm like, no, you don't. Really? <laughs> Nobody I likes training day. legs if it's like, gone right. I have never, never heard a person in my gym that never. has trained legs with me and has said after, I love that. I love that. Like never. <laughs> Never. So if you're saying that, be honest with yourself and go, was this really hard? Because if your legs aren't shaking and bodily fluids aren't coming out of you, you ain't training hard enough. No, I know. I know. And that used to happen to me, like whenever Ryan and I used to go and train, with, train legs with Mark. And honestly, I used to be lying on the floor and Mark and Ryan would be like having this, yeah, having this conversation between sets. And this is, you know, I, like I used to feel so sick after doing my two, um, my two squats. And then we used to go and do lying leg curls. And Mark and Ryan would be sitting having this conversation and they'd be like, oh, yeah, chat away. And I'd be like, sitting on the edge of the thing looking at them thinking I'm gonna vomit I'm gonna vomit and like but I'm, I'm just like pretending that I was part of the conversation but really not concentrating on what they're saying just like you know whenever you're sitting focusing you've ever been so drunk you have to focus on like the room not spinning and so you're you're really trying hard not to be sick or whatever and I that's how I'd be sitting and then sometimes just gave up I'd lie on the floor and I'd be like guys can you fucking shut up and stop talking I can't I have pictures of lying on the floor which yeah, I have post. pictures of me lying on the floor like on, on literally in the like looking like I was praying like in because in the fetal position because I was like and I had to lie in the back of the car a couple of times on the way home Ryan, Ryan would say do you want me to drive yeah like, yeah I want you to drive and I had to lie in the back of the car you know with my legs across the seat because they were spasming so badly like my, my quads were actually in spasm and, and I was again, like oh. again someday a piece of advice this isn't bullshit this is every week this is on a weekly every basis week? so if you're not feeling like that you need to ask yourself why and could you really really honestly do more because the same way as Kim's feeling is exactly the way I feel every Saturday morning I hate, love hate Saturday. Saturday up to 11 o'clock, I hate it. I'm, I'm depressed. I'm crying. Mm -hmm. And after 11 o'clock, I'm happy because it's gone. It's gone, mm -hmm. for tw it's gone for seven days. But by Friday night, it's Thursday now. And I'm already anxious of what's going to happen in two days' time. You know, and that is the feelings leg day gives you. And if you're not feeling like that, then you're not training hard enough. So to recap on the question, look at your training intensity and look at your, 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 your calories. It's as simple as that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's brilliant. Um, Mark Getty, we are all out of time, but I swear to God, I could have talked to you for hours and everybody here, I think, yeah. could have listened to you for hours. Mark, would you be, if we if we organised kind of one of these on a fairly regular basis, maybe yeah, every month I've or something? I've said to you a hundred times, whatever you need me to do, have. I'm for you, a hundred percent. I don't and mind them, I enjoy it. Yeah. And if I can help anybody out, uh, you know, that's what I'm here well, to listen, do. Listen, I just do want to say, so a couple of things um, I'm going to say for the show notes here in the podcast as well. Please, everybody, go and follow Mark on Instagram. It's at the Irish Hulk with an underscore underneath it. So at the Irish Hulk with an underscore. Um, and also Mark is available for private coaching through the Sculpted Vegan website. Ooh. He's actually, um, he does a lot of coaching for us. Um, now Mark, in all, for all transparency, is not vegan, but then we don't have very many vegans. Uh, we'd actually only have like 80, 20% of our company is actually vegan. The rest of them are vegetarian or omnivore. So anybody who wants to book Mark for a one-to-one set, 
session or even wanted to book like a monthly um, program with Mark because we have loads of monthly options which make it much more cost effective. Mark has a lot of people he works with through the company virtually who he creates diet plans for, training plans, check-ins every week. So he's yeah. videos of their training. So Mark is available for one-to-one -one training, um, for one-to-one -one sessions, but also for um, you know monthly training sessions. And it's one a week, yeah. Mark. Isn't that what they get once a week? Yeah, we get one a week. And I try to be very, I'm very professional with the people I actually yeah. and do you know what and I mean? I do give them, time, yeah, I give them weekly check-ins. Even when I was in holidays yeah. in France, I checked them with them every week. I made the time to WhatsApp, call them. Basically, in a nutshell, I've done this for 25 years and I just love it. And that's the bottom line. I like seeing people get what they want out of this. I like seeing people enjoy it. And, you know, we like helping people. And I think me and Kim jailed on it was the fact that we have the love and passion for the industry and we do like helping people out. You know what I mean? Like Kim has helped me out immensely in the past for lots of things, still does. And I think mm -hmm. that is the reason for this. So it's definitely, definitely, definitely worth its weight in gold. And we both like to talk, Mark. So and we love to talk. <laughs> we talk more than the train sometimes, sometimes. But it's good fun. It is good fun. Oh, there's um, somebody, I'm not sure who this is, Facebook user, saying, do the subscription, girls. It's 190% worth it. So this must yeah. be someone that you train, Mark, through the company, but they haven't yeah. accepted the terms and conditions, so we can't say it is. So, and yes, everyone's saying, we want more wisdom from Mark. And loads of guys saying, so awesome to have you, Mark. And thank you. It was great information. If you do uh, need anything in the group, sorry, Kim, just tag me. Um, and yes, I, you're and in the group. Yeah. As, as I'm in the group, so just tag me. Normally, nine times out of ten, I will answer questions. If anybody tags me and needs anything, give it a tag answer a question and i'll get back to you as soon as i can yeah mark you have been an absolute legend um one of my best friends um, and i love talking to yep. you in in person and i love talking to you in lives in front of thousands of people um and i just think you're an all-around absolutely awesome human being and thank you so you much too. for being my pleasure, here Tim. thank you very you much for welcome. having me and um i will see you on tuesday for you will do and i'll life. chat to you over the weekend anyway and see what the story is you know okay mark right, thank you so much. thank you now. thank you guys for watching as well take care all everybody right. talk to you soon bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.